Feeling inspired by hosts Ron and Tyler? This episode of the Movie Buffs podcast is brought to you by the YouTube workout channel, Time to Train Fitness. With all things YouTube, it's free. Jump into a bar class, crank out a cycling workout, or pump out a strength session. Everything you need to work out for free at home. Check out the description and subscribe today. A quick promo break here in this episode. If you've been a fan of our podcast, you've probably already heard me, Tyler, one of your hosts, talk about the Naboso insoles. If you are ever wondering about, oh, what are insoles? How do they help my feet? Are they really useful? I got to tell you that I've been wearing these Duo insoles for probably a year and a half now, and I think they're game changers. If you sit at a desk, if you are on your feet, so basically anybody for anybody in the world, they can really help with your health. If you ever have foot pain or if you have any type of issues with your feet, these can be a game changer for you. Hopefully you take my word on it. You head to the link in the description, you buy yourself a pair and you come back and you share it that, oh, I actually bought those insoles and they actually do work. You know, that'd be something that we'd love to hear, love to see, because that means that you're working on your health. That's it for the promo break. Let's get back to the episode and keep hearing about all the random things that Ron has to say. Welcome in on an episode of a instant reaction in the Movie Buffs podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia and it's been a little hiatus, mostly due to work. Uh, things get busy. Movie Buffs podcast is not the item that pays the bill and more of a, a hobby item. And so sometimes it's got to take a back seat. Not to say that I haven't been watching movies, I haven't been enjoying things that are out. And actually, at the time of this recording, I have a pretty stacked couple of weeks of movies at the theater. So I'm pretty excited for that. In this episode, though, we're going to be talking about The Covenant. And this is actually available on Amazon Prime for free. And Looking and doing some research about it, seeing about the details, how it did, I'm kind of surprised that it didn't do that well. And I think that those are things that are out of, uh, to be honest, the movie's control, marketing, also um, the outlook on a Guy Ritchie film. But in this one, I'm going to talk about details from the, the movie, give a very over or superficial uh, breakdown of it. Try to keep it spoiler free and, uh, you know, hopefully encourage you to go watch it. So before we get there, thank you as always for listening to the Movie Buffs podcast. It's appreciated all the time in terms of that you listen to it, share with friends. And if you ever miss part of this episode, remember you can always catch it on YouTube. While you're there, make sure to smash that subscribe button as it helps our channel grow. Now, I'm going to start this instant reaction with a little bit of background, and mostly because uh, talking about it, the movie, The Covenant, you're probably thinking, oh, I didn't even know that it was a Guy Ritchie film. And yes, it is. And uh, by the looks of it, I, I mean, I'm trying to drag my memory here that this is his first war military based film. I mean, the ones that uh, I typically watch and what I like Guy Ritchie for are the, you know, the English gangs, the slang, all those types of films that he's done that you watch it the first time and you just, you're just almost confused because you don't know what they're saying. But uh, those are the films that I loved and that hooked me with Guy Ritchie because they're different. And with this one, we'll say even with Aladdin and uh, Guy Ritchie going outside his norm, he's probably trying, he, in my opinion, he's expanding. He's trying to do things different, grow his audience, and showcase his talent as a director. I think he is a talented director. Um, this movie did not do too well at the at the box office, which is sad because I do think it's a pretty decent movie. I actually enjoyed it and was surprised. The cast for this movie, Jake Gyllenhaal is in it, and typically Jake Gyllenhaal does get butts in the seats, but uh, this one did not. 
<laughs> he plays John Kinley. He's a U.S. Army sergeant. And then Dar Salim is the other individual in this movie opposite of Jake Gyllenhaal. Now, I'm going to give you the IMDb story. So this is just copy and pasted from IMDb. If you scroll down a little bit on the, the, the page for this, and you'll find, this is talking about on IMDb, you will find the word for word this story. So it says, Guy Ritchie's The Covenant follows U.S. Army Sergeant John Kinley, who is Jake Gyllenhaal, and Afghan interpreter Ahmed Dar Salim. After an ambush, Ahmed goes to Herculean strengths to save Kinley's life. When Kinley learns that Ahmed and his family were not given safe passage to America as promised, he must repay his debt by returning to the war zone to retrieve them before the Taliban hunts them down first. Now, the first kind of area that I'm going to jump into here is, and this was actually what I was thinking about halfway through the movie, is how different the actual movie is than the trailer. In the trailer, it kind of makes it out that it's more of Jake Gyllenhaal's character going to go save uh, Ahmed in and that's going to be the entirety of it, but it's actually the reverse. That first part where Ahmed is saving uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character, that's actually the pretty big part of it. And I think that they probably reversed that with the trailer because people like Jake Gyllenhaal, and he is a very, very talented actor, but I think that they flipped it like that to make uh, Jake Gyllenhaal look and appear like this the, the big hero, the John Wick type going for um, to save his friend. And it was more the, the you know, with Ahmed and what he had to go through his struggles and you felt a lot for him. And you really uh, were on the edge of your seat during those parts of the film where he is saving uh, Jake Dylan Hall's life. And, uh, you know, that, the fact that it was switched, that was something that immediately popped out to me. Like, oh, wow, that it's not really as much <laughs> of Jake Dylan Hall's character. So that was a big difference immediately that popped out to me. So uh, something happens to Jake Dylan Hall and, uh, Ahmed, the character Ahmed in the movie, he has to get him back over to the base, the military base. So that is the kind of the premise of it and with something that was very different. Now, I already touched on this and kind of hinted at it, how this is a very different vibe than a traditional Guy Ritchie movie. Like I said before, things like Rock and Roller, uh, Snatch, those are typically what I think of with a Guy Ritchie film or The Gentleman. I just watched that last week on a on a plane and those movies they have the slang they have the uh tra i want to call them traditional guy Ritchie scenes that uh sometimes people don't like them as much but and i'm talking about like the close-up um fo footage of them of somebody running and um this movie is very different like I said before, this is a military-based film. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of character building with why Ahmed is the way he is and what his mission is and what he's trying to do. And with uh, John Kinley, why he has this debt that he needs to repay and the struggles that he goes through. And there is no slang. There is no, uh, you know, comedic hits that you would traditionally see in a Guy Ritchie film. So like I said, I think it's always nice to see a director go outside their norm. Uh, another director that I've seen do this pretty recently is the individual that did the remake of Tron. And I'm drawing a blank on his name. I feel like it's John. Um, and then last name starts with a K. I'm drawing a blank on it. But he also did a wartime movie. He did the Top Gun Maverick, um, and he's going outside of his norm because at first he was doing very sci-fi based movies like Tron because of his background with um, effects. And then he did Oblivion with Tom Cruise as well. So going outside your norm, showing you can do different things, I think that makes these types of directors more appealing to studios. So I uh, got to give him credit for that. Another promo break for you here. If you are a fan of the podcast, you know at the beginning of each episode, there is a promotion for Time to Train Fitness on YouTube that does online workouts that are free, 100% free on YouTube. What was just added was a 
day workout series. So if you have dumbbells, if you have an indoor bike, you can follow this for one month to help you get back on track and work on your fitness. Check it out at the link in the description. Make sure you subscribe and make sure that you keep listening to the Movie Buffs podcast. Now, where would I rank this among other military themed movies? This is not my favorite favorite genre. And what did actually attract me to it was Guy Ritchie over Jake Gyllenhaal. I will say that right now that I I really like Guy Ritchie films. So uh, this film, not my favorite genre, um, but I have but have I watched the majority of these types of films that are military based? Yes, I have. I've watched Hurt Locker several times. Um, I've watched why am I what is it Jarhead several times and. There's a lot of them out there that, of, of course, I've seen them, and it's not like I steer away from this these types of films. And with this one, I wouldn't say that it's better than Hurt Locker, and Hurt Locker's you know near the top of military based films. But I would definitely rewatch The Covenant. I, I it's definitely has rewatchable factors. It's something that you're going to enjoy watching. The action, it's pretty solid. The story's good. It's not, of course, better than Hurt Locker, the story, but it's a it's a nice addition. It's something that you're not going to struggle watching, and most likely you'll have your own opinion of it after. And you're like, okay, that wasn't that bad, and you'd probably be surprised. That's my opinion on it. Now, is this based on a real story? So I, I'm going to read what I found in terms of um, if this was based on a real story. This was actually from, I think it was from Screen Rant. So it says, though it's taken from real events, the covenant and its ending isn't based on a true story, but rather the collective experience of hundreds of interpreters and soldiers during the war in Afghanistan. While doing promotional work for the covenant, Richie explained that he watched several documentaries about Afghan Afghanistan and was struck by the bonds forged by the interpreters and their colleagues in the, mil, in the American military, inspiring him to tell their story. Interpreters were promised visas after aiding American soldiers in Afghanistan. And when the U.S. military withdrew in 2021, after over decades of conflict, many were left behind and remained so. And this was actually stated in the credits near the, I think it might be uh, the first minute of the credits after the movie ends, uh, something along those lines where it shares more about the stats and um, how a lot of these interpreters were left behind behind despite being promised uh, American visas. And it's okay, when you read that, it, it is sad. It is very sad to hear. Um, this podcast is not about politics. It's not about war. It's not about military and who's right, who's wrong. And But I'm just saying that that is a very sad fact that was that is probably not talked about that often. And that's sometimes what movies can do. They can talk about things that people don't know much about, and, um, you know, what, what comes to my mind and I'm, I joke that I'm very much, um, pharmaceutical, um, uh, that I'm very over the pharmaceutical, uh, conflicts and the issues that our country has with the dependency on drugs. And, uh, there's a lot of films, there's a lot of uh, shows that are, have come out about th this issue that we've had. And um, it's sad that nothing's ever going to have about it. And I feel like that's why I'm, I'm mentioning it is that because this was pointed out in this movie and most likely nothing will come of it. Nothing will happen. It'll just move on, which is sad. Now, let me give you a little bit of movie trivia to brighten your hopefully rest of this episode after my little vent there. So I just pulled these from IMDb because I thought they were pretty interesting. So one of them here, and I don't know how truth, truthful these are. I'm going to say that right now. I don't know if they're truthful, but <laughs> they're fun to read. After the negligent discharge of a firearm that resulted in a tragic death of one woman on the set of Rust in 2021, that was a very popular thing that happened, or not very popular, but a very popular in terms of it was in the news and sad incidents that happened, and um, I don't even know what the outcome of what of what happened with it because I know that there was some legal issues with it. Guy Ritchie strictly enforced that there would be absolutely no actual guns on the set of this film. All firearms shown throughout the film are airsoft guns or rubber, so pretty interesting I thought there. In a 2023 interview, 
Guy Ritchie elaborated on the film's major theme. You want to focus on authentic generosity. And we had to go for some lengths to make this saccharine. I had to work very hard against that. It's almost like they don't like each other. And even after the journey, they still don't really like each other. And honestly, whether you like someone or not, it's not important. It's how much you respect someone that's important. And have they allowed you to exercise your altruism or your generous side? And this is the argument with children. Do you owe children or do or do they owe you? Because once you have children, they allow you to express your generosity. People are at their best when they're expressing their genuine, their generous nature. So that was a pretty interesting quote, I thought. And there was, I mean, a handful of these movie trivia things, but I thought that that was a pretty one, a pretty interesting one to throw in there because when I read it, the part about how they don't really like each other, and I thought about it, I was like, that's actually pretty, it came across in the film that these two characters don't, it's not like they're buddy-buddy, hugging each other all over each other when they first see each other. And I'm, I'm, that's kind of giving some stuff away there. So I'm going to pull back a little bit there. But you do get those vibes. And it makes sense what uh, Jake Hall's character is going through. That he owes this debt and he wants to repay it. it would, just like the movie says, it's a covenant. And then he, his ability to do that, he, go, he goes to great lengths to do it. And so pretty fascinating with how... Guy Ritchie tried to uh, play this out in the film and probably how he tried to express this to the characters. And then lastly, the last trivia part here, and I talked about this one already, was that the, as the end credits roll, photographs of real-life soldiers with Afghan interpreters are shown. And this is where that information was, was also relayed about all the interpreters that were left behind. So my recommendation for this, if you are looking for something to watch, during a weekend, you have Amazon Prime. Why not? It's one of the. It's a. It's a free to you if you already have Prime. So why not throw it on? I think it's worth the watch. It's interesting and probably uh, you might be surprised. That's my honest opinion on it. So as these instant reaction episodes go, these are just meant to spark some interest, get you thinking about something you probably wouldn't have watched, and of course include some spoiler-free information in there. My name is Tyler, as always. Uh, thank you for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.